Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at problem number 50. And before I bring the camera around to my paper for you to see the question, problem number 50 is a subtraction problem where we have basically two rational expressions, or kind of in English, two fractions with variables in them, that are being subtracted. One of the things that you need to pay attention to, this is not an equation, so we cannot just clear fractions. It's an expression and we're subtracting two expressions. And think back to arithmetic. In arithmetic, when you subtracted fractions, you needed a common denominator. So really no different in algebra. So with that being said, let's look at my problem. Let me bring the camera around to you. And let's look at what we're trying to do here. All right, here we go. So this is our question. 4x plus 12 over x squared minus 36 minus 3 over x minus 6. Now, what we need to do here first, this x squared minus 36 really can be rewritten a different way, so I'm going to sort of erase that, and I'm going to replace it with x plus 6 times x minus 6. So what I did is I factored that denominator in that first, let's call this a building. I factored the denominator in that first building. Now when I look at the second building, the denominator is pretty much already factored just sort of as x minus 6 times 1, and we really don't need to show the 1. But here's what I want you to look at. Here's the first fraction. Look at its denominator. And now let's move over and look at the denominator of the second fraction. Look what's missing. All right, everything we need is over there. But what's missing from this second denominator is an x plus 6. So what I need to do before I can proceed with this subtraction problem is I need to multiply this denominator by an x plus 6. And of course, when you're doing something to a fraction, what you do downstairs, you also do upstairs. Okay? So, let's continue with the problem. Alright? We now have the same denominator, so we can actually proceed with the subtraction. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the denominator one time. x plus 6 times x minus 6 is the common denominator, so I'm going to write it once. The first numerator, right here, was just 4x plus 12. Now to get the second numerator what we're going to do is we're going to take negative 3 and distribute it to the x plus 6. Negative 3 times x would be negative 3x. Negative 3 times a positive 6 is a negative 18. Very important to realize that to get that, I distributed a negative 3. And at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to look in this new numerator that we just came up with, and we're going to collect like terms. 4x minus 3x becomes x. Of course, the 12 minus 18 becomes negative 6. And in the denominator, we still have x plus 6 times x minus 6. Now, this is where we are so far. I want to make sure that that answer is in lowest terms. And the way that you make something is in the, the way that you make sure that something or an algebraic expression is in lowest terms is by factoring. Now the denominator's already factored. And the numerator, to be honest, is almost factored. But to convince me that it is, what you should really do is to say, well, how about I put a 1 in front of the x minus 6? And that 1 is really important because look what happens. Now the x minus 6 is cancel. That 1 that you put in there may have looked strange at the time you put it, but it's very important now because it becomes a placeholder in my answer. 1 goes in the numerator. x plus 6, of course, is what remains in the denominator. And there's my final answer to this problem, 1 over x plus 6.